What's up guys? So I've mentioned in previous videos that I sublet my office to a colleague for part of the week, and many of you have asked how I structure that process. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the do's and don'ts of subletting your office in private practice. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. Now, before we dive into the do's and don'ts, let's clarify a couple of things. First, what is a sublease agreement? If you're a tenant renting your office from a landlord, a sublease agreement allows you to rent out your space to someone else, even though you aren't the owner of the property. And second, what are the advantages of subletting your office? From my perspective, there's two primary advantages to subletting. First, you can get a little bit of passive income to help reduce your overhead costs from renting your space. And second, you have this sort of built-in colleague right there whom you, whom you can refer to and also consult with as needed. So as you can see, the potential advantages of subletting your space are great, but I've also seen this go terribly wrong many times. So here's some do's and don'ts to consider if you're thinking about subletting your office space. Number one, do not enter a sublease agreement without getting formal approval from your landlord. Do check with your landlord to see if subletting is an option for you. Just because you rent the space, it doesn't mean you have the authority to sublet it. Your landlord has the full authority to deny you the option of subletting. Most landlords let their tenants sublet, but they tend to have a lot of stipulations about what that looks like. Number two, don't dive into a sublease agreement without being crystal clear about why you're doing it. Instead, do consider your reasons for subletting. Is it to make a profit? Is it to have a colleague nearby that you can consult and connect with? Or maybe it's to help someone who's just starting out in private practice. Knowing the answer to this question will vastly dictate how much you charge for the space. If you're trying to make a profit, it might be higher than at cost, or maybe if it's to have a colleague to consult with, it's at cost. And if you're trying to help someone out, you might even offer your space below cost. Number three, don't give your sub lessee free reign of the office space. Instead, do make sure you set some really clear ground rules for how your sub lessee is to use the space. So in addition to something like what dates and times they're allowed to use the space, you might like to consider such questions as, are you open to having someone other than a therapist sublet your space? Whomever it is that sublets your space, if they are a therapist, are they allowed to use whatever therapeutic modality they choose? So for example, let's say your office is 100 square feet, is this therapist allowed to conduct group counseling in this space? Also consider whether the sub lessee has any say over the design of the space. So for example, is there a designated area where if they want, they can bring in their own furniture or file cabinet, or are you expecting that everything about the space remains exactly as you have it and they're not allowed to make any changes? Also be sure to consider whether your sub lessee is expected to participate in the upkeep of your space, such as emptying the trash after they use it, contributing tissues or other sort of housekeeping items. Number four is super important. Don't share your office space with anyone without entering into a formal written agreement with them. In addition to entering a formal written agreement, do make sure that your landlord has fully approved this written agreement before your sub lessee signs it. And number five, don't be flexible about what dates and times your sub lessee uses the space. You might be thinking, oh, they're only seeing a few clients, what's the big deal? But I assure you this will lead to tension down the road because inevitably they're gonna start wanting to use some time slots that are ones that you wanted to have, and that's not good. So instead, do consider whether you wish to sublet by the day or by the hour, but whatever the case may be, be crystal clear about which days and hours your sub lessee is able to use the space and keep those as their designated times. So as you can see, there are several things to consider before you decide to share an office. If you're curious about my current setup, I do sublet my space to a colleague. She has the space on designated days, and so I do not enter the space on those days, and she doesn't enter the space on my days unless we have very clear request and permission to do so. The reason I went into a subletting relationship with her is because she was actually a friend of mine who happens to also be a therapist and she was just starting out in private practice and it felt like a really great opportunity both to help her out 
but also for me to have a colleague that I can consult with regularly, make referrals to, and just generally not be isolated in a practice that otherwise can be quite isolating. If you watch my earlier video where I take you on an office tour, I show you there which parts of the office are designated as hers. So for example, she works with kids and I exclusively work with adults. So she has some designated areas in the office where she has things like a sand tray, a basket of toys, some art supplies, and a spot for her client files as well. Well, I hope you found this video helpful if you're considering subletting your space or maybe you're considering subletting a space from someone else. Let me know in the comments below if there's any tips you would add. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. Today's video is brought to you by therapynotes.com. Therapy Notes helps with scheduling, notes, and billing so that you can spend more time with your clients and less time on back office paperwork. Click the link in the description of this video to get two months to try it for free with no commitment. And it's uh, beneficial for you both.